So it's lesson 22 and we're going to start looking at uh, how we can merge a lighting plan in. We're going to have some quite quick fire lessons now, none of my long ramblings. We're going to just quickly hack through uh, one lesson at a time some very simple features in, in, the, CAD, in, so in the lighting uh, mode of, of WYSIWYG. We're, we're doing this because a lot of the time people are searching for things on YouTube, you want to search for something very specific and, and this is the thing that most people can be searching for. So we're just creating lots of small pointed lessons now. Um, I did just want to say that um, how, how important it is for me when I'm drawing in WYSIWYG and I'm doing lighting, uh, how it works for me as a lighting designer. In the case of Jesus Christ Superstar, when I was lighting this, I would use WYSIWYG as a way to check all of my positions, to check what washes worked, what height the bars needed to be at. There was an enormous process that involved a lot of design iterations, so constantly changing what we were doing as we were going, to try to um, accommodate all of the changes in, uh, in the design, to try and see you know, what lens types are needed in, in the fixtures, uh, how many fixtures are needed to be able to create a suitable you know, wash across the, across the stage from our booms. So these decisions have been made in WYSIWYG. Uh, so a lot of things were changing as I was making it. The final model that I used for pre-visualization isn't what I was uh, drawing in the first instance. And it's really important to have that design iteration. And it's one thing that WYSIWYG is really good at. Uh, I hope more lighting designers would use WYSIWYG for this reason. Um, it's not just a tool for programmers, it's not just a tool for WYSIWYG operators who are there to support lighting designers. Uh, a lighting designer can do a lot of this themselves. Now, one lighting designer I work with very regularly, and I'm not going to name him, but he uh, is an expert at Vectorworks, and he will do all of this work in, in Vectorworks. He'll work out the correct lens types, he'll work out the, the potential angles and understand how lights can get under scenery in shots. He doesn't have all the scenery in 3D the way I'd build it, but he has enough there to, to make decisions. And when I get the models in, in WYSIWYG, I find that everything he's planned is absolutely perfect. That process of preparation makes everything so much easier when you get into the venue because you know exactly what's going to work. So this is why pre-visualization is so important. It's not just a way of, uh, of looking at something that you can program in a lighting desk. It's part of your design process and it's something that should be, uh, should be encouraged. So hopefully the next few lessons we're just going to crack through some of these principles of the lighting in WYSIWYG and you can, um, you can make up your own minds whether or not you want to use it as a lighting designer as well. This is lesson 23 um, and we're going to look at how we can merge a lighting plan in. Um, now I, uh, I'm quite proud I've got quite nice microphones in my, uh, my setup here to make sure you can hear me nice and clearly. Uh, it's become apparent to me while I've been playing back the videos that it means you can also hear the, uh, the reduced traffic because obviously not many people are driving around at the moment during the virus but also as a consequence of the violence my children are all at home so apologies if you can hear my children in the background but hopefully it just adds to the ambience and it's not too distracting. Um, so very quickly we're going to look at how we can uh, merge in a lighting plan. Um, I promised I would also try to figure out what's gone on with my grid settings uh, and why the um, uh, the lights didn't snap to the grid and I'm afraid I've failed you because I can make a line snap to the grid so you can see as I move it it's snapping to those half meter spaces I can make a truss or a pipe snap to those spaces uh, but when I go to add a light it doesn't it just lets me slide all the way along quite neatly so I don't know why it's doing that but my solution to you I might ask WYSIWYG this question and give you an update one day you can turn on show grid in your view options. Sorry, not your view options, in your document options. Um, oh, we're going to go standard style. Okay, and there we go. Now we've got a grid. So if you wanted to place a fixture and you just wanted to, you know, line up as nice neatly as possible, we can just work our way along here. So there we go. Um, I'm going to turn that back off again because I don't actually like it. It gets in my way. Show grid. And I'm going to delete that pipe. And delete anyway and delete there we go so importing a plan so I'm going to go file merge like I did earlier when we we're looking at 2d plans um, we did brought in the set drawing uh, I'm going to go to my JCS folder I've got a really neat um, folder structure which I've grayed out so you can't actually see it but uh, just to give you an idea because uh, I don't want you to see my other productions is the reason why I'm graying everything out because I have our productions that I'm protected under NDA and just don't want you to know I'm even working on them and they're all in my quick access I don't want to accidentally show you something so that's why I'm being a little bit sensitive about my my folder structure um, but I, I have a a very nice filing structure which I'll, I might show you a screen grab of later which makes it easy for me to find things quickly but I have a lighting folder and in the lighting folder I have CAD plans and I've got the latest revision of my CAD plan and as I import this now 
jumping back into to where we were before, you can see if you if you haven't done the uh, chapter three, um, we were looking at uh, I think lesson sixteen. We looked at menus and importing. We did all this uh, as a part of the process for importing. You know any any CAD plan. We're importing the set plan at the time. Uh, it's exactly the same process. Is that we're going to make one slight variation as we're importing. So I'm going to go uh, U000 as base point. It's really important. I uh, do everything to 000. Uh, for me, as I said in earlier lessons, this point, it's it's the, it's a generic base point of your entire venue. For me, it would always be the back of the iron. Uh, if you don't have an iron, it'll be the front of the stage along the center line. So if that is common to all theatres and all venues in the world, and this doesn't always fit, I know like the Olivia Theatre of the National um, Theatre in London, that's that's got a, a sort of an amphitheatre look. There's it's not an obvious point where that would be, uh, and I can't actually remember where they set theirs to, but it's it should be a a really obvious common point that all of your drawings use as a base point. I know that the Royal Opera House's architectural plans when they did the refurbishments in 1999, they used this this datum as the base of all of their architectural drawings whereas normally they'd be drawn uh, based on an OS survey um, which would be to an architect's coordinates but it, it, it's really important that everything uses a base point that's that's familiar you never draw anything where it shouldn't be um, so we click OK we can ignore this it does have relevance but we're not using it at the moment we got to specify the import method. Now, I can't remember what we did last time. I felt like it might have needed to be inches, but we're going to go with millimeters because that's what it should be. If it's not, we'll have to go back and do this again. We click next. And now this is the only bit that's different. Um, ah, no, sorry, uh, wrong bit. This is a bit where we uh, import and we change the prefix. So I like to select everything. And everything's got JCS on it at the moment, which is quite neat. But there's a few things in here that don't have um, labels the reason for this is that i imported the um the, the the ground plan all of the uh the basic uh drawings that we were looking at for the scenery they all got imported into the uh the, the lighting plan they all say they're frozen because they're, we're not using them so we don't actually need any of these so we can turn all these off so i'm going to select everything and turn everything off and then i'm going to go through and find all my lighting layers that are relevant I'm just going to select these, so uh, get through all of these. Got labels, lighting rooms, Alex lanterns. I can't actually remember which ones are useful, which ones aren't, but I'm just going to bring all of those in because they haven't got the JCS prefix on them. Makes it really nice and easy for me. This is why prefixes are so useful. Oh, the catwalk, we want that. And zero, just in case. Death points is something that AutoCAD creates. I didn't use it, so I'm going to pretend it's not there. I'm going to turn those on, and I'm going to add a new prefix to them. I'm going to call this LX underscore, and I'm going to group them together when they get into to cat into WYSIWYG. So now, when I import it, it should add the LX prefix. Just makes it really easy. Um, I could also actually what I should have done. Let's go back. I will do it because it's good practice. I'm going to do LX version one underscore as well, so we know which version of the LX plan. Because when the LX plans change, we can easily see which are the the old, which are the new. What's what's changed? It makes it much easier to to make updates. So I'll click OK. And click next now this is a bit that's new this is the thing i wanted to show you in here there's an option to convert our lights into fixtures i'm not going to do all of them because there's some blocks in here that don't work um and i, I really want to to demonstrate a couple of different methods of importing lights when we get into it so i'm not going to take you if i do it for all of them i won't be able to show you uh every every option so i'm going to start with my pars i'm going to choose convert make it into a fixture so it's windows not quite big enough so just scroll it across I click on null dummy and there's a little box here with three little dots if i click on that it will open up our library that we saw earlier and we can choose our light so i'm looking for a par so i'm going to go type conventional uh, you saw me fail with this earlier when i was trying to find a source for but pars are quite easy and there's just a ce source for par which is generic par medium flood lens i can't remember what i use i think i might use the wide flood lens so no, I'm gonna leave it on MFL. Uh, we'll see how it looks. We can change it later if we don't like it. Uh, I had some Max 600s moving lights. Let's convert these. Uh, we're gonna go to. So I'm gonna try this different now. I'm just gonna type in Max 600 in the search. And there we are, Max 600. Lens was definitely wide in this case. 
and I had some VR1000s. Lovely lights, miss those too. Uh, and these are the tungsten versions, even better. Uh, I'm going to do this again on the top of VR1000. And it's a TS. A lot of people don't know that there's actually an AI version or a TI version, which is an iris in it. Not, not many of those around, but the shuttered version of the tungsten is a very popular popular lamp in the theatre industry, or was, when we still could get them. Um, although the LED version is quite nice as well. Uh, and I'm also going to change my Fresnels, um, because there's quite a lot of those. So, it just says generic 1000 watt Fresnel. Uh, I know the Churchill Theatre has a load of 743s for 1000 watt Fresnel, so strand pattern 743. Again, a lovely light. So I've got some good choices of lights here. Um, and you know, I'm going to do one more because I know I've got a lot of sourceful piles in here. I don't want to slow myself down. I'm going to choose this as well. But these will also have scrollers on um, and they will need an accessory adding to them. So I will have to do that when we get there because I can't add an accessory uh, at this point when I'm trying to import things via um, via the, uh, uh, the convert tool. I'm going to leave those on MFL insert and then when I click finish it's going to add all of these blocks as fixtures and the ones I haven't I've left out to library like the color blast the cantatas the vl5s did I have vl5s in this show I don't remember that but anyway um, they will all be added as uh, as normal CAD drawings not as fixtures and just to emphasize that the reason that these blocks exist here is because these have been made into blocks in AutoCAD um, to do that you have to um, have to assign something as a block and you give it a base point uh, there's a bit of a process involved in that I might do an add-on later showing you how to do that if you really want to know um, I don't want to slow down this process though because I really want to focus on, on working in WYSIWYG but if you, if you don't know how to make a blog uh, block in AutoCAD that's just something actually you can you can find on YouTube somebody somebody will show you that quite quickly because it's a generic process for AutoCAD but if you haven't built a block you won't see it in here the other thing I wanted to say is that if you import a Vectorworks drawing that's been converted to a DWG, um, the blocks will be nested inside a dozen or so other blocks and they all have obscure uh, alphanumeric names. So they're you know, C4065321D 4000 or something. Um, and you'll find this list will be enormous. It'll be like this, all these groups. It'll just be an enormous long line of them. And somewhere deep inside all of that, you'll find a... A name of a light um, so one of the other reasons why I don't use this tool very often is that usually I get my lighting plans from light and designers use Vectorworks because Vectorworks is such a popular tool for drawings at the moment uh, and it's impossible to to extract these it's much quicker for me just to to, to place a fixture over a, uh, over a drawing than it is to go through the process of cleaning up a CAD file in order to get the tool here to work uh, as I said at the, you know, the last lesson, the time I've used this the most will be for really large shows when I've been working on an arena show or a, you know, a, big, a big ceremony because there's just so many lights. Uh, this way I can guarantee that everything that's a block has been converted. But you really need to know that CAD file well to trust it. Uh, I wouldn't want to take someone else's CAD file if I hadn't created those blocks myself and knew how they were made. So, click finish. So there's an advanced blocks tool there which you can explore if you want to in your own time I'm not going to cover it now so it's saying it's created 15 new library items it's added 57 fixtures to my file so let's see what it's done okay there we go so it's brought in some text as well I had some text on my file so this is my CAD drawing so these are my booms this is how I draw them in AutoCAD that's the, the base plate position uh, it's really important to, to make sure that's indicated on the plan um, and, and then these are my fixtures. So you see I've got an actual fixture there and it's inserted the pipe automatically. Um, and this here I've it's a source for. I've not specified uh, a fixture for it. It's just brought in the symbol and left the, the color underneath. Uh, all of these numbers, they're all just text. There's no intelligence to them. We can do that later. Um, now you can start to see the problem is this is a, this here is my front of house truss. Uh, we had the four stage up instead of having an orchestra pit. So I've got a, a VL5 on the ends, uh, source for par, VL1000, and they should all be on the same bar, but when you bring in the fixtures using this tool, it creates a pipe for each individual one. It doesn't 
always have the intelligence to put them together. Sometimes it does, so here we go. This one here is created a pipe because it's figured out that all of these are in a line and join them together. And this elects bar they haven't. So it's uh, it doesn't always work the way you'd want it to, but it's um, it's definitely better than having to insert you know, 3,000 lights manually. Um, you still have to go through and, and name them all anyway. So for me, it's, for production of this size, it's just easy to draw them from scratch. So we're going to come to that in the uh, in the next lesson, and uh, I'll talk you through how you how you edit the properties, how you can patch, and how you can change the modes of all your moving lights.